Greetings. It's a timeshare traveler. Today is episode two, two, five, 225. Booking a four month trip. Now I use four months just as an example, but it really means booking a long trip. So let me talk about that. I'll be talking about what booking a long trip, the four months example. Uh, I'll book, talk about booking holidays and why that's important. Then plan out the rest with flexibility. Um, tips in case you don't have enough points, how you can stretch them. And I'll give you a few examples of that. And then other considerations that I think are important as well. All right, before I do that though, give me about 28 seconds. I'll tell you about my channel and I'll be right back to go into the details. Hi, this is Cliff and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, Timeshare Ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 timeshare video reviews and I've published over 95 timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, at Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. Well, I'm back. I'm back. Let's talk about the uh, booking a four month long trip. Again, it's just my example. And I live full time in timeshare, so booking co I'm constantly booking out four months ahead. Thought I would just share my experience with everyone in case you ever have like the opportunity, which I consider it a great opportunity to do that. Um, and that's actually easier than you think, or maybe I've just gotten used to it, so it's relatively easy for me. Um, but I'll share that with you. Um, so the first thing I do is kind of plan where I would like to be. And sometimes on them on week long things or sometimes on short weeks with a weekend getaways and it, it's all more or less trying to plan ahead. And I do that about uh, four. I'm usually running four months ahead, maybe a few, a few weeks longer here or there, um, depending on if I'm trying to book a Hawaii trip or something like that that's special for some event. Um, the things I, I, I like to plan is I always consider the off peak locations to stretch points. That's kind of one of my things is, you know, I don't necessarily want to be at the peak season or nor at the bottom, but somewhere in the middle off peak is kind of, I think the best way to be. Um, and I look at many booking options, exchanges, uh, using cash, different things. So it, that's when I do this, I look at a lot of different options and I've gotten good at it. So planning it ahead is not that big a deal. So that's the first thing. Um, the example I'm using. So when you're booking a longer trip, you're going to run into a holiday. And again, I use four months, but it could be three months. Um, always check for holidays during the next, you know, whatever period you're looking at and book those first. In fact, if you're even thinking about it, sometimes you might even book the holiday um, five or six months out just to have it taken care of. You can always, typically you can always cancel within 30 days and get all your points back. So it's not a big deal if you're going to do that. Um, and again, book the holiday period first. And again, talk about flexibility of where you travel to and from based on where you are in the holidays. Um, and again, you plan out the other weeks around the holiday that you have booked. And then you can sort of come into the holiday and then go back out a different way or vice versa. Vice versa. Um, and again, I mentioned sometimes you have to book more than uh, four months out for some holidays, Christmas being one of them, New Year's typically. Those are probably the hardest. And Fourth of July is also difficult. Okay, now you got the holiday taken care of. Now you can start booking. You can focus on the rest of the trip. And I like to book the same locations for multiple weeks on a long trip for when it's four months out. And then I typically book one week at a time, but I check avail availability in advance um, because I want to try to see. Can I get two weeks in a row? Do I, Cause that way I'm just, I can get in one room and stay there so I can do a two week. So when you're doing four, four months, you know that if you do it uh, uh, two weeks at a time and you're down, you're down, you have to find basically eight places. Um, so anybody again, but if I'm on Hawaii, I might look at, uh, you know, staying in a few different places because they're kind of in the same area. Um, so I map out my trip, but I rearrange the location. So I might, if I'm driving across the country, I might go come back the north, back to California and head through the south um, to where I'm going. So that way, or I might switch it based on availability and points and stuff like that. So I look at it all kinds of ways like that. Um, and that's why I say be ready to rearrange locations. 
um, check off each time for each location. Because sometimes it's like, you know, two weeks later and you're off peak. And when you're, when you're planning, you're like, hey, I don't mind if I'm plus or minus two weeks on this one location. I just want to go there. And so I always check to see what the sort of when the things cut off. And again, maximize the peak. Just for example, Hawaii, the weather is pretty much the same all year round. In some places, you get a little more rain in the winter. But in Hilton, for example, I know the the uh, low cost, it's, uh, Hilton is September and October. And Hawaii is pretty much the same weather. But in September and October, it's you know roughly 30% less points. Also, it's April and May, just so you know. Those are, the, those are two areas for Hilton uh, on the Big Island in particular. Anyway, that's how you do the plan out and know the flexibility, know the edges where the, the uh, break in points happens. Now, I wanted to include this section, which is if you don't have enough points, um, because that's when get, being creative really matters. Um, look at the exchanges. If you book within 45 days, last call, which is the RCI equivalent of last minute, is you can do them for less than $400 a week and no points. Um, getaways, which is the interval equivalent, is under $400. And there are others like GPX. They have um, weeks available um, for $399, so it adds up a little more than that, but tax and everything. But So it's a little more than $400. And the reason I like $400 is if you think about it, um, a one-bedroom or two-bedroom uh, place that rents for $16 a month is a pretty good deal. So as long as you can beat that or at that, that's a good rate. And again, that includes all your utilities, water, and so forth. So it's really a lot less than 1600 You know, if your rent was 1600 it's really more like 1200 with $400 worth of utilities for the TV, cable, and everything else. Um, I look at all the options to use cash instead to stretch things out. And most timeshares have cash rentals. World markets, in my opinion, the best because they have almost unlimited if you can plan ahead. Um, like I'm talking about here, you can get out even nine months and use cash. Or in three months, it's even less. And then these cash is less than your maintenance fees. So it's really an extension of your maintenance fees. So world's market my favorite for this. But um, I use, also use hotel points. I book hotels with kitchens. And that's when you do these presentations and you get hotel points. Now you can turn them into, you know, booking that four month trip that you always wanted to do. Um, and again, it's similar to timeshares, the hotels with kitchens. Anyway, hope you like that. Now let me give you some other things to think about. And like I say, last but not least, other, other considerations. Book into the smallest unit saving points. Do the studios have full kitchens? Because you can usually have a bed and a couch and a kitchen. And if that's what you have, and you're going to, maybe that's one you only use for one week because of your eight weeks because yeah, you don't want to stay there for two weeks just because you want a little more space possibly. Um, um, are there lots of grills at the locations? So you need a minimal kitchen. That's the other thing to look, to look for is the grill situations. Um, again, minimize travel costs because you're looking at, you're going to book something for four months or you're going to use, uh, potentially use cash um, to book some locations. So minimum minimize the travel. Um, and I'm a big proponent of, again, when you're doing a longer trip in particular, it's okay if it's a win one week trip, going out to dinner, yes, you know, that's that's part of the, you know, the benefit of the vacation. But if, if you're there for four months, lower your costs, get a Costco membership or a Sam's Club, um, lower all your overall food costs. Eating at restaurants is expensely, expensive, especially on long trips. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe.